When I open a new game, the first thing I'm looking for is how to move the fastest. Whether that be climbing, running, using exploits or abilities, I always want to be at peak speeds. Something about being able to move fast just because of how well I'm playing gives me the highest tier of satisfaction possible. Half-Life 1 for example has my favorite and most well-known type of movement, bunny hopping. Bee hopping is a type of movement technique in both the Gold Source and Source engine, where the player can increase their speed by constantly jumping whilst air strafing. By doing this, you will gain speed upon every successful jump. Not only is it really fun to do throughout the game, it's decently easy to perform. Memorizing certain parts of the map also help you get into the flow of where to go, almost as if you were just gliding throughout the game. In Half-Life 2, the bunny hopping is way different from the Gold Source style. Air strafing doesn't really give you speed anymore, so the only way to gain speed is by continuously jumping. This is referred to as accelerated back hopping. The amount of backward speed the game applies on you is based on your speed the moment before the jump. So the faster you are when you jump, the more speed you'll get. It is literally the BLJ to Half-Life 2. Not only is this extremely useful in some sections of the game, but it can help you skip whole parts of it. It's also the fastest form of bee hopping, so when you hit high speeds and go over large distances, it's bee hopping at its best. The third and final instance of bunny hopping I will cover is on CSGO. Since it is still on the Source engine, even if it is a more modern version of it, it contains bee hopping. It has the same technique as half life one of air strafing, but you don't gain any additional speed. In competitive and casual play, it still serves as a good way to go from point A to point B. This type of bee hopping is obviously not as good compared to the others, but because of the type of competitive game CSGO is, it is very obviously nerfed to be fair. I mean, we've already seen examples of what would happen if it was just as good as Half-Life 1. If you knew the Just Cause series, you would know it's an open world game. For a game like that, having such a large map, you would need ways to move all the time. It's one of the main reasons there are so many vehicles in every area. But the full course meal of this game is a wingsuit, grapple hook, and parachute. It's literally the main selling point of the Just Cause series. With the grapple, you're able to latch onto aircrafts, cars, and any vehicle for that matter. With the wingsuit, you gain lots of speed over large distances, especially combined with the grappling hook. The parachute is also way more useful when combined with the grapple, because compared to the wingsuit, it is not entirely meant for speed, but an easy way to glide through open areas. With how each area is designed, it shows that you would need those mechanics to even accomplish more than half of what you could without them. Assassin's Creed has another interesting take on movement, but this time in terms of parkour. Since you are playing as an assassin, all the things you are required to do needs to be precise and smooth. This also goes for how you move around the map. Almost every piece of geometry in buildings is able to be latched onto, and buildings have their own way to go rooftop to rooftop. It's especially cool when you're trying to reach a high building. You have to do all these precise jumps and movements, but then when you reach the top, you can just jump off and keep moving. Although it's not the most insane bit of movement in the video, it really takes on a whirlwind of satisfaction when you're moving around the towns of Italy or France like you run the place. Back on the source engine movement, we will be surprisingly not talking about bee hopping, but about TF2's actual game mechanics. In almost every class, there is a set of weapons you can use that would increase your speed, height, or overall mobility. Scout is a great example of how other weapons purposely make your mobility way better. By himself, Scout is already quite the acrobat, with an increased movement speed and a double jump, but when giving him something like the Atomizer, he's able to jump a third time. Combine that with the force of nature, and it allows him to cross an even greater distance. Then combine both of those weapons with the winger, and now if you use each of them in the correct order, you can cover gaps that are almost hard to imagine. This is without mentioning other movement-based weapons like the Soda Popper, that when fully charged can give Scout a total of 5 jumps in the air. Moving on to the Soldier, is a great example of creativity when it comes to mobility. I will be getting into a mechanic called Rocket Jumping. Rocket Jumping is when you use your own rocket launcher's explosion as it boosts your speed and height. When used correctly, it allows you to move in all sorts of ways around the map. Because of some source engine shenanigans, when you move against a slope at high speeds, you are able to slide off of it. When combined with Rocket Jumping, you are able to develop paths all across different maps. My final example will be on Pyro, someone who can use your weapons that are not entirely meant for movement, but could still be used for it. Detonator jumping is a mechanic where you inflict damage on yourself and use the knockback from a detonator to gain additional height. Combine this with a backburner and a power jack, and you can catch the enemy by surprise quite easily. The whole gig with Celeste is the fact that it's a platformer, so of course it would have good movement mechanics. It has basic things to know like the fact that climbing needs stamina and that dashing only has one use, but the big part of this game to me is the advanced tech you could do. A super is performed by dashing on the ground followed by a jump, which results in a long distance jump. A hyper is performed by dashing down diagonally, then jumping before the dash ends. A wave dash can be performed by dashing down diagonally after a jump, and then jumping almost instantly after landing. A wall bounce occurs when the player dashes upwards when adjacent to a wall, and then jumps during the dash. A neutral jump occurs when the player jumps away from a wall without inputting the direction or holding down the grab button. This prevents using stamina. 
The attack I just listed is just about half of the things you can do to improve your movement in-game. Although you'll find some of them as tutorials in-game like the Hyper and Wave Dash, most of these were discovered by the community in ways to make themselves faster, which in itself is a sick part about learning them. Another cool movement related thing on Celeste is on level 1. There's a secret barrier you are able to get by beating the level without dashing. It is a testament to the player skill and muscle memory, since so far you've been having to play with a dash at your side. Since climbing is stamina induced, you'll be needing to do things like neutral jumps. And when you reach the top, you can realize how many hours you spend doing absolutely nothing.